this week, we're here for the launch of Peugeot's new 2008. Peugeot's taken a bit of a risk. Their sales have been fairly ordinary over the last few years. And they've released some models that, although they're very good, are very slow selling. The beautiful 508, for example. The 2008 was released about seven years ago. And this is the newest generation of the 2008, which is due to go on sale in a month's time. These very cars, the second I finish this video, are going on a truck for a road trip around Australia so that customers can see what they're buying and they'll be able to pre-order. Pre-orders apparently have been pretty good so far. So what does this offer that the previous generation didn't? Well, it comes in two models now. Peugeot is dropping the GT line altogether. And for the time being, there's only two 2008s, the Allure and the GT Sport. Apparently there's a GT coming sometime next year. Outside, it is just delicious. The top model has these fabulous cat's claw headlights and daytime running lights, and the rear cat's claw tail lights as well, with the outer one being a super bright brake light. Inside, it is just stunning. All of this stuff, this carbon fiber look, is fairly soft, but there's this absolutely delicious lime green stitching on this soft touch panel. You can't see it there in the movie probably, but it matches the lime green on my virtual dashboard, on my digital dashboard. And the digital dashboard is 3D. It's actually two screens, one behind the other. The front one is transparent. Overseas, you can get these cars in a base base model with absolutely nothing in it. The Euro N cap is five star and it's based on the fact that the car has all of these safety options included. If it doesn't have those, it doesn't get five stars. We've got a widescreen touch screen just here and that's also got the current theme of lime green which I think looks absolutely spectacular. Below that we've got a row of piano buttons. Now you can see I've got my phone plugged in and so it has Apple CarPlay up. So there's real estate around the side of the screen that's used for fixed things like air conditioning. Look at this volume knob, isn't that, that's just beautiful. And it's sticking out on this row of keys and it's a double row of keys too. You can go home by pressing one of the keys along the top. You can also get to navigation, for example, and music. The next row, the row in front, has the climate controls on it. And you can get to those, as I said, in the buttons as well. Down below that, we've got this clever little tray for your wireless charging. And to the left of that is one of the USBs. This one is a USB-C. The other one is just a standard USB 3. There's lime green lighting around here under the dash, which I think looks just spectacular. And overhead, there's a sunroof. This top model also comes with drive modes. All of the Peugeots have this pistol grip gear shifter. You shift it into M by pressing the M button, funnily enough. And in this one, in the top model, you also get paddle shifters. The paddle shifters are only in the top model. We had all of the cars this morning out on these really windy roads and they are spectacular. Now, while we're on the subject of driving, steering is a super small eye cockpit steering wheel. And the eye cockpit consists of this, see, you can put your fingers through this bit here and there's some little lights down yonder. For some strange reason, Peugeot have divided the upper and the lower model with two different engine choices. Both of them are three cylinders. The top one has 115 kilowatts and an eight-speed automatic. The bottom one has 96 kilowatts and a six-speed automatic. One thing I particularly want to mention is the ride. The ride is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. One thing that Peugeot's always done well is handling. 
and this car handles spectacularly. One of the things that Peugeot said to us this morning was they wanted to do unboring. I'm not sure that unboring is a word, but that's what they want to do. Now, I'm on a particularly nasty, rutted bit of road, and this is really smooth. Faster this morning, the faster we went, the better it got. Seats on this top model have power adjustment and a massage function, and of course, there's seat heating. One of the things I particularly like is the fact that this Azen automatic is so smooth. It is so smooth. And the engine is absolutely delicious. Now it's strange that such a small three-cylinder engine has so much power, but that's where Europe's heading. Smaller engines, more power. We're about to go into the new tunnel that's cost us such a lot of money. Now you can see we're at 80 kilometres an hour and I'm no less comfortable than I was at 60 kilometres an hour. It is just extraordinary that such a petite little car rides so well. You can see now that there's this green glow everywhere. I really like it. It's not a particularly nice shade of green, but it looks so effective. It's sort of like the green version of Tron Blue. Now, what I just did was press the memory button twice. Up on the dashboard, 80 kilometres an hour came up in my traffic sign recognition. And all I had to do was press memory twice and the cruise control went to whatever speed that was. If it was to go down to 60 or up to 110, I'd just have to press it twice and it would do the same thing. It would go up or down to that speed. You can see that the buttons have come up and a backlit at night. This cabin looks beautifully moody. The other thing I'd like to show you is up here the dome lights. They're touch sensitive, which is just extraordinary. And the cabin, apart from being so moody and delicious, is also incredibly quiet. It's got all the modern safety gear too. You've got autonomous emergency braking, which works at night and with pedestrians and with cyclists. You've also got blind spot monitoring and lane centering to take all of the stress out of a long road trip. You've got excellent fuel consumption, decent acceleration, and the car is dead sexy. I particularly like the wedges, this wedge shape at the front and at the back. I like the fact that there's 30 litres of storage scattered around the cabin and that the luggage space is class leading. The rear floor has two positions so you can have the floor in one spot, store some secret stuff underneath or put it down to its lowest spot to add extra storage. This offers something no other small SUVs offer and that is it's as sexy as hell, it's beautiful to drive, easy to park, remember it's got automated parking. As always, if you've liked the film, don't forget to leave a comment, hit like, but most of all, just there, over there, to subscribe.